Okay. Gotcha. I accidentally swapped out cameras. I have two, two cameras. My son came home yesterday. He was borrowing one. I think I grabbed the other one when I plugged it in. So, can you hear me now? No. Excellent. There's a few very last minute touch-ups I need to do to Bowmark before I start the molding and casting process. Back here, the dreadlocks just got super uh, smoothed over from all the primer that I was using to get the skin smoothed out. Um, and there's just a few still kind of unnecessarily tucked up in their cracks that no one will ever see or appreciate that will just wear the mold out as I cast in it so I'm gonna try to fix those real quick Kenzo how you doing good evening good morning oh you just reminded me I haven't done my thingy thing let me do my thing real quick been spending the last hour prepping and I managed to not do the normal prep stuff that I do. How's it hanging for folks? Things going well over on that side of the continent, on the different continent than me. Share, that's right, share is what I'm doing. Hashtag. We'll just assume it is. Sorry about that. It's unwise to sip out of a straw while bending over when it's a solid straw hit my knee and that bashed into my tooth. I'm lucky I didn't lose a tooth. That guy. This guy. Oh, I've got this guy. Okay. I think I got all my boys.
Denmark won the World Championship in handball today. So Denmark celebrates. Uh, is it called handball? I do not know what handball is, so it may or may not be. I am also an ignorant American who is doubly ignorant because not only am I an American, I also don't watch any sports. Handball could be the most popular sport in the world and I wouldn't even know it. A couple years ago, our local football team, which is not the football in the rest of the world, um, won the Super Bowl, which I assume is like you get an extra large salad when you, when you go out to eat. Um, everyone around here was so excited. And then ever since then, the team was just, from what I can tell, from what I pick up, just kind of declining since that time. Which, you know, it's called regression to the mean. It's a statistical inevitability. The closest thing to sports that I watch is... Uh, oh, I can't even remember what it's called. It's not Robo Rally, that's a board game. But it's where people program or build little robots and then they make them fight in a cage. And only when I just randomly happen to catch it. Robot Wars. All right. You convinced me. That's what it's called. Handball. Men running around on a track and throwing a round ball to each other. <laughs> on a track? Yeah, I think it, I think Robot Wars sounds right. I think it's on Sci-Fi Channel, maybe maybe Discovery Channel. Maybe it's bounced around throughout the years. It went away for a while and then kind of came back, and probably went away again. And I don't even know. I, here's the thing: is whatever that thing is uh, that exists in most people who appreciate competition, I don't. I just don't like competition. I actively, uh, uncomfortable is not the right word, but I, I don't enjoy personally the sensation of winning, of beating another person. I don't like that. I'm like, uh, but, ha but now they feel bad. And I don't feel good from when, well, maybe a little bit. It depends, maybe it depends on the stakes. Like, if it's very low stakes, I don't mind winning. Uh, I don't enjoy losing either, so it's like, there's just nothing in competition for me. And apparently that also applies to others doing it in the name of my country or state or city or whatever. Just, I don't care. I think that's the most ridiculous thing to have any amount of civic pride about. It's like, yeah, our, our team spent the most money and got the most talent, talented mercenaries to come run around all sweaty on a field throwing a ball back and forth. So there you go. That is uh, the world's least charitable interpretation of sports. There you have it. Okay, so one of the things I'm doing today is filming for... Uh, an upcoming tutorial on mold making. Since I am doing the process anyway, I figure I should do, because I kind of have a tutorial on it, but it's really kind of slapdash and fast, and I'd like to do a much more thorough one. So in this part, I'm showing how this little crevice in here, you can see how my tool 
can kind of get wedged in there. What that means is when the rubber pours in and then you pull the mold out, you know, you pour the resin in, you pull the mold out, you pour more resin in, you pull the mold out, through that repetition, it's going to wear on this piece because it keep, keeps getting grabbed there and it's going to tear. And then you're going to end up with a big, like, torn bubble type thing. So if you can, especially in places where no one would notice, filling in those little gaps is a good idea. I just found out this morning that when I record on my camera, even though the signal is downgraded for to go out to the internet, it is not downgraded when it's recorded to the memory card. So that's really exciting. I can I can actually shoot tutorials and live streams at the same time. Hooray for time savings. I need all of them I can get. Inspector Dave, hola, how's it going? Kenzo likes women's beach volleyball. Well, gee, I wonder why that is. Yes, I am recording on purpose this time. It's a there's a first time for everything. find a brush that is just stiff enough to push the clay up where I need it but not so thick that it actually distorts it while it's doing it. I 
haven't quite decided where I'm going to put the parting line yet for the mold. I'm thinking down this strand because it's got the steepest kind of cliff going on this side and on this side. And so one thing I can do to kind of help smooth out this back end here a bit. Yeah, I'm just finding the areas where the clay is, or where the, the surface is too smoothed over from the primer, adding some texture. I think that the super glue is Dunzo's. Might still be a little bit left in here. Oh, that was more than I wanted.
of just makes it so these little blobs will stick a lot easier. Remembered. I was unhappy with how straight this thing dangles, so I'm thinking I'm going to snap it and bend it just a little bit. OMG, it's a moose. What materials am I working with? Uh, so this material is called epoxy sculpt. And I actually have a tutorial for it coming out on the first. So look forward to that. It's a two-part epoxy clay that you um, you mix together 50-50. And in a couple hours, it's hardened up to pretty much be a rock. As you can see, it's pretty strong. One of my favorite materials. Uh, pretty much go between this and Super Sculpey Firm. And the two play off each other quite nicely. This stuff is great for adding on to or modifying sculpture. Um, I don't so much like building up a sculpture from scratch with this, but uh, I end up oftentimes practically covering a sculpture that I started in another material with it. Frozen. Try, uh, try refreshing the page. Is it anything like Milliput? Uh, yeah, it's just another form of Milliput, really. A much more economic form. You know, you get these big old tubs instead of itty bitty strips. Um, I think I've tried to use Milliput a time or two. 
And I don't remember if the material had significantly different properties at all. Um, but the price difference is just so dramatic that it doesn't... Never enters my mind to buy that instead. The woman's head looks like it was 3D printed. Uh, it's a dude, but I understand a lot of people do think it's a woman. Uh, he's a very beautiful man. And yes, it was 3D printed. You could see kind of how rough it started out. Um, and the entire thing is pretty much covered in this epoxy clay. Yeah, I bought a nicer level 3D printer um, that should be able to do higher resolution stuff, but the print bed is very small. So the future prints that I do will be higher quality and hopefully require less cleanup and covering up as a result. And um, But I do have to cut them up on the computer a lot more, which is very annoying. to this guy. I did not like how perfectly straight down it was hanging. When you look at the rest of his hair, you see it. the dreads all have a little bit of wave to them. And this piece was missing that. Uh, Sigrid, did you do a, a refresh of the page or did it just randomly stop and then start working again? I don't think anything changed on my end. There's no like, you know, warnings telling me I've got low internet connection or anything, so. working by itself huh so you you heard the audio but the the video just froze up if that's the case I would guess it's just something on either twitch's end or your service providers end
had a better texture brush. Where did it go? also have these little texture stamps that I made from quote unquote flexible Sculpey about, I don't know, 14 or 15 years ago. I'll be happier with that. Alita says, I'm trying to explain to the cats that the French toast is for me and not for them. Well, you just sound like an awful, awful person. Why would you not make French toast for your kitty kids? How much time do I usually put into my creations? Uh, more time than you would believe. <laughs> if you want to see, uh, go to my YouTube channel. Look me up, I'm Josh Foreman, and check out my Shadow of the Colossus uh, playlist. There you will find the current running total of 18 episodes. 
And am I even halfway done with it at that point? I, I honestly don't even know. I've been slowly editing together the video that I took over four and a half years and can't even remember how many hundreds and hundreds of hours I spent on it. But, um, I am not a lazy person, let's just put it that way. I have a lot of very long-term projects that just take me forever, and I am okay with that. I've got a video project that I started in, uh, well, I started writing in 2008 and started filming in 2010 and it's been on hold while I create other assets for it such as the Colossus was one of them um, and there'll be a few others before I'm ready to do the final final put everything together it's like a, um, a video game commentary like about the art form of video games and one particular element that I think is bad and we need to change as a video game industry. And then I've been working on this book series for which uh, Beaumark here is going to be a cover model for the first one that comes out on April 1st. We've got 10 novels written in it, me and my co-author. I started world building that probably about 20 years ago. Oh, thanks for checking out my website. Sigrid says, my husband says, shame on you, AJ. Now he have to make toast for me. <laughs> That's how it spreads. Uh, I wish there was someone to make French toast for me. Oh, that reminds me, I got, um, uh, let's see, keto uh, pancake mix to try. I should try that today. I'm not on a ketogenic diet, However, I try to be low carb as much as possible. It's the only way that I not be 50 pounds heavier like I used to be. And um, pancakes, man. Pancakes, cookies, oh, miss them all. And then when I, when I do let myself have any, I just like go crazy and end up eating like three to 5,000 calories in a day. In half a day, really, because I usually don't eat breakfast or lunch, at least on, on weekends. And then it'll be the evening, and I'm like, I'm going to eat all the stuff I don't normally let myself eat. Rawr! And I turn into Cookie Monster. material I'm adding just air dry uh, it's it's not technically air drying because it would dry in the vacuum of space or underwater um, it's just the chemical reaction of the two epoxy parts joining together but essentially yes they they just dry on their own once you mix them you have about an hour and a half to two hours of good working time with it so I, you know, I mixed up a batch this size, and uh, that's what I've been working on for since we started, which was 45 minutes ago. So I'm doing all right.
I don't think anyone who is with me right now in the stream uh, is local to me, but for anyone watching this on YouTube later, if you are local to the Seattle area, uh, please come check out my very first convention booth at Nerd Fair at the Linwood Convention Center. Um, it's not this weekend. Well, is, is it literally one weekend from now? No, it's two weekends from now. I want to say it's like the ninth or something. I really love the idea of doing conventions because I can just... I've, I've done them before. Uh, art fairs and stuff. Cause you, I just get to sit there and sculpt like all day. It's so fun. And um, every once in a while someone will talk to you about art and that's fun too. So it's like the best of all worlds. At some point I'll have stuff to sell at them and then it'll be like triple fun because I'll make a, well, will I actually make money? No, the amount of time and materials that I've spent on stuff. There's no way I can sell things that actually make money. Uh, but I can sell books and pretend that I'm making money from that, even though I've spent, you know, like hundreds of thousands of hours <laughs> developing the books. So there's no way I'll ever recoup that cost. But it's okay, it's still fun. Do I take commissions? Uh, not really, I, unless it's like a very big, like, you know, if uh, if Disney was like, hey Josh, will you design some aliens for the next Star Wars movie? Yes, I would take that commission. Um, I recently took a commission for doing album covers for one of my favorite bands called Demon Hunter. And, uh, but just, uh, just normal, like, pay for artwork. No, I've got too many of my own things that I'm dedicated to finishing, especially these books, because my mom is my co-author and she's been working on writing these things for well over a decade and still we have not published anything. So it's it was like getting to the point where I was being unfair to my co-author <laughs> to not just finish this stuff up and, and the reason that it's taking so long is because I'm putting so many illustrations and arts and stuff in there um, so yeah I, I just had to stop doing a lot of things and say I am going to absolutely finish this get at least the first book trilogy out and start getting her some of the fame and recognition that she deserves because these books are really good. little pinch points like in here Lara 14 says did you end up seeing the eclipse moon blood moon uh, yes I saw it as well as I could since I didn't have a telescope it was not uh, super clear to me it was definitely cool I've never seen the moon look quite as um, like spherical three-dimensional because it had that kind of red bottom and then the white 
crescent on top of it. It's pretty cool seeing it that way. Thanks for alerting me to that, by the way. finally getting to that point where I've made enough molds in my life and used them enough that I'm starting to be able to recognize the little areas that are going to start tearing if I don't address it in the sculpture. That's exciting to recognize a little bit of growth. A little bit of uh, progress that the experience is making. forgot wanted to fill in the scar just a tad here filling in scars. We also have Teeny Bowmark and his chin scars are a little too aggressive. Subtlety achieved. Maybe. B, hello. It says, did some more work on my sculpting today. Still trying to perfect those darn eyes. Eyes are tricky. They're the window to the soul. Uh, I 
still, to this day, do not have eyes down. Um, Bomark here, his irises are just slightly different sizes and shapes. And every time I go in and try to adjust them just that, you know, fraction of a millimeter that I think they need, then it ends up moving some other little line, perceptual line, that I didn't realize was important to the expression and the look that I was going for. So, yeah, I feel you. But, um, yeah, I was, I was actually very impressed by your bust so far. I think uh, she's looking really nice. I, I would recommend blocking in some hair sooner rather than later. Just blocking it in, not, not making it pretty, but just to get the volume in there. Laura says, so what exactly are you doing? Are you fixing things you can't work with molding? Or uh, what I'm, I'm, let's see, what's the right way to say it? I'm making slight adjustments to the sculpture to facilitate easier molding and casting and a longer lasting mold. That's probably the biggest thing. Um, I'm also fixing areas where I had this kind of crunchy hair, you know, dreadlock texture down here on the tips, but because I did so many coats of um, primer, you know, I do primer, sand it, primer, sand it to get that skin smoothed out. Uh, a lot of that, you know, oversprayed up onto the hair and it lost most of its texture. So I'm having to go back in and just reestablish that texture as well. So I'm kind of doing two or three things at once.
Alita, you started a worldwide French toast uh, virus. Thanks for following, Moose. You know, I think I've literally said, oh my God, it's a moose before. When I lived in North Pole, Alaska, this is a true story. It sounds like I'm making something up, but I lived in North Pole, Alaska, and a uh, mama moose and baby moose walked through our yard. Uh, they ended up doing it several times probably during that same winter. But yeah, I remember looking up and out the window. It's probably said, oh my god, it's a moose. I made a little bit more so I could finish seaming this guy back together. I had this guy broken up into five or six pieces for molding. Um, and this is the original, so I figured I might as well stick it back together and paint it up and just have it for my own decoration. says when I visited in Alaska I followed a mommy moose and her baby around the block trying to get close enough with one of those cheap cameras maybe it was the same ones <laughs> yes yeah, so you do not want to mess with moose the mooses are ginormous I knew uh, one of my friends hit a moose in their car. I think they were on the freeway, so they were probably going 40 or 50 miles an hour. And 
just destroyed the front of their car. They're lucky they lived. The moose just got up and walked away. They're like, ah, that's annoying. And by got up, I mean got up off their hood or like, I don't even know if they fell over the hood, like if it knocked them down onto the hood or they just kept standing and the car just, you know, crumpled in half around them. Come to think of it, this entire sculpture was done with epoxy sculpt. So here's an example of something I started from scratch, uh, not in Sculpey, but in epoxy sculpt. Um, just the surface quality of it lends itself really well to that sort of, to this particular material. You can see as I've tinkered with it over the years, I had different colored <laughs> stuff that I was adding to it with but all the same all epoxy sculpt Canada goose are the scariest animal though. I've, I've heard that. I don't remember if I've had any specific run-ins with geese. I've had some terrifying experiences with chickens, <laughs> but that's when I was little. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've seen those geese just chase people down with angry fervor. Havij Aseng, have a great night slash day. Hey, you too. Thanks for stopping by as always. Uh, I put it back in your room somewhere. I thought I was going to need two cameras, but it turns out this one can record full resolution while it's also streaming, so I didn't need it. 
Is there a way to connect uh, like one my, like my camera to my computer? Uh, I use the Elgato Cam Link. It's like a hundred and twenty bucks or something. No other way. Not that I know of. It's a, your Sony. It's a DSLR, right? I uh, know it's a mirrorless. Uh, I think it's the same as what I have. Uh, I mean, you can research it. I don't know. As far as I know, the only way to get nice cameras working through on your computer is with one of those cam links. I'm going to need to fill in with something. And then, hmm. I wonder if it wouldn't be a good idea to just add a little bit of. Really shouldn't need it. Hmm. One thing I could do, there's these, there's all these little itty bitty pits and stuff in here I think I want to fix up. I just got to remember to keep my hand holding it here so I don't smush the work I did already, which I tend to be bad at. So, so yell at me guys if you see my hand going to the wrong place. Robot Devil from Futurama. <laughs> it does kind of look like that, doesn't it? It's a album cover from one of my favorite bands called Demon Hunter. Have the um, here's the. That's the actual album cover art. There's a painting by someone named Dan Seagrave. He does pretty cool covers. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I put my hand up here. Naughty, naughty. Oh, look at that. Okay, I was wrong. It's not safe to put my hand there. It squashed that stuff. But it's already squashed, so I might as well just finish what I'm doing and then go back and fix it.
Hey, Kenzo. Thanks for hanging. Dottie B says, when working with Sculpey, would you recommend baking it when you are halfway through so you don't mess up what you already have done and then finish the rest of it? Or would you just sculpt the entire thing before baking? Uh, it really depends on, like, I would not, I would not bake before I'm happy with my face. Like, once I felt like the face was done, then I could do a bake and then do something like add hair, you know, different elements. But if you think you're going to go back and still need to work on the nose or change the eyes or something, you definitely don't want to bake then. Checking, I haven't accidentally squashed any other parts.
I should take that out. I wasn't. Can you just turn it off? I was hoping to get to some clay layup today, but since I did this, I can't really lay the clay around it without wrecking what I've done, so I shan't be doing that. Yes. I hate it when I, I made more of this than I needed because I thought I was going to be doing something else and then I don't do it now I'm just like desperately looking around the studio for something that needs more clay needs more clay yep can't think of anything so what's going on this guy Hot glue would have worked just as well and been 100 times cheaper, but this clay was just going to go to waste anyway, so I as well use it for my pour spout. Oh, I should record this. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Did I turn down the volume on your little computer thing above the bed? Um, the, on the upper I know, I was clicking on left. that, but nothing was happening. I don't know, I'll have to look at it when I get in. Yeah, I'm almost burning the house down. I'm actually, I was just warming up uh, clay. It's, uh, it's called clean clay, and it's good for when you're... Uh, it's an oil-based clay, never dries out, so you use it for mold-making purposes, basically, to block out where you want the clay to eventually, or the uh, rubber to eventually go. Alright, so let's put that there for now. Alright, the mark gets to go over here. place to plug in my little glue gun. Let's plug 
Yeah, okay. All right, I'm gonna go check on my clay and get a refill real quick while this glue gun heats up. Uh, you guys type in the chat if it starts a fire and burns down my art studio.
Yeah, that clay does not smell good when it heats up. Now, even though Damon isn't here for the stream today, uh, I've advertised him once so far with his uh, his nursery cup that he sent me, and now, secondly, uh, with this beautiful lid that he sent me peanut brittle in, uh, I'm repurposing it for mold making purposes. So, how lucky how lucky is he? So lucky. Got hot glue coming out. Okay. Mm. Let's see. Is there anything else you need to do before gluing him down? I don't think so. In the recording. gonna go over him where are my new scissors at I bought amazing new scissors where'd they go I, I, oh I keep putting them there and, and and now they're not there okay I should use crappy scissors now scissors at all. Who needs scissors these days? Not me. Go, beautiful. This one I'm going to be doing a one part mold uh, out of a sort of clear mold material. <clears throat> Come on. That should, in theory, man, this light is driving me crazy. Stop flickering. Um, And it should make it so that I can just cut a line down the back. And since it's clear-ish, I should be able to guide the blade pretty well to make sure I'm getting it into the back. And um, that's all I got to say. That's all you get, guys. Sorry, it's all you get.
occurred to me since I'm doing this in a um, since the mold I'm using is going to be uh, um, platinum based it'll be food safe meaning that I could do a um, I could pour chocolate into it and make chocolate Bomark heads which speaking of which I was already planning on doing with this guy make some nice chocolate coins show how it's pinned to the back it's on there real good uh, no that's too small Flora says, make sure to temper your chocolate. Muchos importante. Hey, tell me what that means. I literally don't know what that means. Uh, pre preheating it? Is that what you mean? Or are you making a joke about metal casting? I would accept either as, um, as perfectly valid, acceptable forms of uh, exchange. Okay, so got that. We don't need any more of this. Oh, did I stop recording? No. Stop recording. Okay. Um, oh. Uh, where'd you go? Here she is. Is there anything else I want to do before casting her? Where's my little blow boy? Here we go. Definitely good to get all the dust off before you cast something. Get that little cobweb in there, that's no good. I disagree with cobwebs. I mean, I, I like them for decoration, but not for mold making. Angry chocolate? Uh, no, I want smooth, chill chocolate. Is 
some weird grit under her chin, and I don't know why. I can sand that off, though. Uh, let's see. Valara14 says, Chocolate needs to be very specific temperature ranges to set up their crystalline structures. I don't remember exactly the science behind why. I just know that each type of chocolate needs to be heated up to a temp range and then cooled down to a temp range, then heated back up to then cool in a mold. Pastry is my thing. Uh, good to know. I mean, I'm... I mean, I would obviously be looking up tutorials before I did it, but that's something I will, uh, I'll keep an eye out for. I certainly don't want to poison anyone who accepts my delicious chocolate, chocolatey Bowmark treat. Poor lady has had one billion, trillion, million paints, uh, coats of paint put over her throughout the years. Finally getting around to actually molding her. Probably made her literally, I don't know, 13 or 14 years ago. No, I guess it wasn't that, because I was married to Heather. The boys were definitely little. Mm. What is it? 2019? I'm going to say it was around 2007 that I made her. She's my best guess. Yeah, oh, darn. I love her hair too. In fact, that's the main reason I made her. is a lot of paint. Not only paint, but also like rust and other chemical reactions. I did a, a video on my YouTube channel about um, sophisticated finishes, which I did on her. I tried to give it a patina bronze look with that material wasn't super happy with it I always try to sand it down before doing another paint job but you know I don't I can't get in every little crack and crevice so all the cracks and crevices start to fill up with paint as it goes Yeah, just lots of sanding, sanding and then painting over, painting and priming over it. So in theory, I should be able to do this in a two-part mold. Uh, the way I set, the way I sculpted it, I was specifically thinking of doing it in a three-part mold. Uh, as in, like, if you looked from the top down, it would be, like, go down this way, and, well, it wouldn't go straight through the face. It would be more, like, around the face, down here, and then another one straight down the back. But, um, I didn't feel like it was actually worth it. Like, so this thing had a hole through it. That Several of these had holes through it, and it was just, like, what? there's no point. It doesn't, doesn't really add anything. Uh, so I went through and filled in certain unnecessary gaps and now I'm pretty sure I can just do a two-part mold. It's going to have to twist a little bit. It's going to have to go down and then like cut across here and then down around here. But the rubber is flexible enough to handle that, I'm pretty sure. And then just down here. 
Uh, it's going to have to see there's this tricky spot here. I don't know if I should bother filling that in or not, but that little spot, it's I'm trying to think if I, you know, I filled in under here. I should just, I should just draw a line. Down, me down, me down, down. another light that doesn't flicker because it is awfully handy having a light that just goes right there. Awfully handy. A good thing mold box bottom for these guys possibly and a completely unrelated thing these pins just reminded me I wanted to try this out These are a variety of uh, pins that I use to see if I can get nice little carvings in my foam. And I saw these pins. I was like, hey, I haven't tried these yet. Because the, they all have different, slightly different chemical compositions to them. And so some of them will kind of corrode the the foam more than others. enamel paint marker. It certainly is not uh, a fine point. Dermabrit. Okay, let's try. This is manuscript. Subscribed. Holy camoly. Yeah, it doesn't seem to really be eating in. Oh, I take that back. It is eating a little bit. It's hard to tell until you put the black paint over both. Let's see if I can get a nice fine line. Meh. Meh. 
whatever. Okay. But that is not why I got this pin out. Got this pin out so I could come up with a dividing line. so much uh dreamer brett for that twitch prime subscription really appreciate that you're one of the chosen few make sure you use that uh spam that skull uh, head uh icon thing what, what are those called emojis i know i know memes and cool kid things okay How are we gonna deal with this? Uh, first things first. This area is a little bit rough, so I'm gonna clean that up. clay is going to be she's going to be laying in the clay so this is the back okay and what I'm trying to do is create the parting seam where the front and the back meet so me where there's a hole where it goes through like that you have to have the front and the back meeting there, meaning the scene, the part has to go on both sides of a hole like this. That goes without saying. It's how you connect the uh, two parts between those holes that things can get tricky. So for instance, I could go up on this ridge to connect these, or I can go on that ridge. And the solution to that is to say, or how, how that is decided best, is what's going to be the easiest when I am taking, I'm cleaning up the seam that's going to be there to drag my blade along to clean it up. And so is it there, or is it here? And the secondary question is, or well, maybe it's the primary, uh, which are you going to see the, the clearest? So, you know, you're looking this direction at it, and are you going to see flashing here more or here? And so I'm thinking back here, it's easier for the blade, and you probably won't see it as clearly especially because it's going to get broken up by this little ridge here. So I'm going to plan on putting the seam along the back here. Okay. So, you know, this is going to have parting there and there. There's no choice about this area. It just is what it is. But as it comes down here, OK. 
Okay, so this area is where the front mold is going to meet the back and what's the best place to put that? Because we know it's coming from back here. This is where maybe a long paintbrush might be a better tool to use for this. I think I'm going to see what happens if I follow this hair ridge here. And up here. you always want your seam to be on a high ridge again it has to do with running your blade over it if it's down in a trench it's hard it's hard to, to get a nice clean removal uh letha said got my new business cards last week needed to update the info and website and stuff oh cool i was uh just designing my latest um business card and realized, you know what, I don't really want to update it yet until I have uh, a good picture of the Scarred King to put on there. See, here's a not great scene because it's going over several ridges. It would be better if it did not go over several ridges. So I'm going to instead say, what if it goes over those ridges back here where you're not going to see it very well and then it could follow the, this hair strand up here I think that's probably a better look so this, oh look at that this just rubs right off the paint relatively easily that's cool I hope it doesn't end up uh, inhibiting the cure of the rubber you never know what weird chemical reactions you're going to end up with it is a risk i'm taking okay goes without saying it's going to be in there and there This ridge it's got to meet up here hmm. trying to decide if I want to go along this upper one and then follow this guy down or if I want to keep it on the back here the problem with keeping it on the back is I've got a cross over right there which I like to avoid as much crossover as possible no avoiding going over this whole ridge of hair here which is annoying but it's going to be pretty well occluded by this big chunk so it's probably not a big deal I'm 
trying to think, do I need to, if I continue the ridge along here, Uh, this piece, Dotty, was that the head was made in Super Sculpey Firm and the hair was done with epoxy clay. So the back needs to continue to wrap around in order to grab this hole here. sides of this little ridge that will also help this piece not catch in the mold. Yeah, and there's really no way around just going over this ridge here. Oh well. This part's going to be a little tricky because it wraps so far around. So you got to imagine clays being laid all the way up into there. And then where do these two parts come apart? It has to be at least this far back. Let's see if I just kind of follow this wrap around where do I end up So somehow I need to connect this line to here. This is going to be tricky.
Okay. Going through there. Going through here. Another one on this side. Oh no, there's a hole there too. Oh boy. That means I can't go on this one. over here. All right, thanks, Dottie. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great rest of your day. Having this big corner come up here could be problematic. It's better for the seam if it follows the hair as much as possible. I guess one thing I could do is try to pull it back this way. And then it's going to have to go over that. Uh, it's probably worth it just for the health of the mold though, if it sticks closer. Because you got to imagine, rubber's here, and the more it wraps around to the front, the more it's going to have problems uh, sticking together properly.
did actually know that, didn't I? Hard to visualize when there's so many twists in the piece. Comes through there. He's out there. Yeah. Needs this and the inner in here. plan, will I be able to execute it? Let's find out. I need a box that's approximately this big. It's about a shoe box size, I think. Let's see what I've got laying around. Guessing these are quite big enough. Oh, so close. Well, maybe the same one I was going to use for bow mark would also work. Oh, hey, what's this? Yeah, that'll be fine. So there's two ways I can do this. I'm trying to decide which I want to do. I can build the do build up of the clay around it and then pour or set that into a plaster that will then create the mother mold. Then I pop it out of the mother mold, pull the clay off. Uh, you flip it around, you stick it back in, you pour the rubber through that one half, uh, which is the... Let me draw this out. I've done this enough times I shouldn't have this problem, but I do, the, I do it infrequently enough. It's every couple months or every year or so that I forget <laughs> the basics of it every time. It's so annoying. Uh, do I have some paper to draw on? Okay. So. 
here's how it goes. You have your model. Okay. It has an uneven seam that goes down the middle. Uh, we need to continue that out for... Okay. Here's the sides of the box. Here's the bottom of the box. So, you can put your clay around it. It becomes fatter. And this clay ends up being removed and replaced with rubber. Um, so it usually has some pore spouts in it, built into it. Um, so, here. so, if I do that part, then this part becomes plaster mother mold. Uh, then we flip it over. Whoop. After that plaster is set, we pull that part off. We remove this clay. And then the sculpture needs to stay in place in it. That's where things get tricky. Um, let's see, at that point, you lay it face down in another box. Do the same basic procedure. Okay, this part comes. So maybe you don't remove this part yet. Because you can, let's see, while it's still this way, man, it's so hard to visualize for me that I think I'm just going to try to do it since I'm doing it twice. If I get it right the first time, great. I can use that footage. Uh, if I get it wrong, then I'll remember the right way to do it, and the one I do for Bowmark will be correct, and then I'll use that footage. Yes, I'm very clever. Very clever about being a dummy. Okay, um... my nice warmed up clay. Okay, I'm going to go mother mold first. If 
I do mother mold first, I think that me, I'm going to stop thinking. I'm just going to do a thing. And I'm going to, yeah, I keep paralyzing myself with thinking. Darn thinking. Okay. Here's so how I'm going to do it. And then I'll find out how I did it wrong. Uh, oh, let's start recording. Okay. So, you establish, here's the box it's going to go in. Okay. Using this here. To protect the sculpture. Clay. It's still fairly warm from the oven. I'm not worried about pressing it on super tight, just enough to get about between three quarters of an inch and an inch of coverage. Thanks for believing in me, Aletha.
Okay. Oh, I'm doing this long process. Uh, might as well read out names. So we've got Carlos Gomez, subscribed on YouTube. Uh, Ismail hmm, Altinas. Altinas. It's Peachy. Uh, Kinyaz Prime. Carol Ann Campbell. Ron Wilkinson. Serial Killer 1. Veronica Varner. Uh, Marie Fuchs. Uh, on Twitch, we've got Joan Nuad24. Back on YouTube, we've got Nakwa2010. I hope that doesn't mean they were born in 2010. But actually, I guess that doesn't make them too young. Not that I have a problem with young people. I just have this visceral fear about kids on the internet. I'm so old. Such a fuddy duddy. Uh, Prox. On Twitch, we've got Wicked Ways. Wi oh, wi Wicked Ways. Okay. Uh, which I seem to recall from before, so that must be a re follow, maybe? Is that a thing you can do on Twitch? Anton Boyzon on YouTube. Uh, Van Van on YouTube. Wolfie. Probably. It's got, got a zero or a capital O in there. Who knows? Uh, Yucca Runner, Keith Slawinski, Slawinski, you know I used to be a Formonski, well my forefathers used to be Formonskis, apparently that was arbitrarily changed at Ellis Island to Foreman. Brandon Ramos, Claudio F. Morales, Known Anonymous, Fernando Santos, Paulo Maria, or Ma Maya, there's no R in there. Uh, Don Barney, uh, Braden O'Neill, Rodrigo Mendes Brandel, maybe? Uh, Am Smalls one, I'm gonna say. Uh, Desiria Ramos. Richard Botenig, maybe? Suskind seven. Matthew I see at I say Paul O'Regan Matt 500 Greg J uh, and we already established oh my god it's a moose is following on Twitch and subscribing on Twitch which is super great Uh, Lillian Glover on YouTube. Uh, Dream Mr. Brett on Twitch. And there we go. That's the top of my list. Hooray! We did it. We made it to the top of the list. You like the name Braden? That is a cool name. I would not complain if that was my name.
You never know. People like to complain about their names. Heather hates her name. I like the name Heather quite a bit. She hates it. So I'm sort of um, roughly following where the seam is, but it doesn't need to be precise for this uh, mother molding process. You used to dislike your name for a while, back in your late teens, but now you love it. Yeah, having an original cool name is pretty awesome. I don't know any other Alitas, and that's great. I have a friend at work named Tirza. I also love that name. She's an amazing illustrator and environment artist. It's spelled T I R Z A H. I'm wishing I kept the stuff in the oven. Totally forgot I had this other piece to do. that I can slice this easily. I did not think of this before. I'm going to just grab some of this, put the rest of this 
It will be. Trying to find all the warmest bits to keep out for myself and put the cold bits back in. I'll be right back. Also, I had this sitting inside by the heater. So I've got some good fresh stuff to use. Probably worth showing to you. So the thing to keep in mind is that this amount of clay that I'm putting in is going to be replaced with rubber. So when I pull this clay off, I should put it in a container like this and measure it and then I'll have a good idea for how much 
uh, rubber I'm going to need to pull. Pour, mix, create, ex nihilo for the mold. not an exact measurement because it's not because I put that plastic wrap around it so there's probably some areas where it's not quite hitting the surface but it's very close Hmm, just realized there's some holes in here that are going to get problems. Do I need to add stuff right now to fix that? Let's see, I'm going to need to pull the sculpture out regardless. I think, I think I'm okay. I just do a 
Uh, I'm breaking my brain again. Let's see. If I do the mother mold this way, if I, I would have to cover the whole thing. I would have to do the sides out to the sides of the box. And then flip it over. I would pull that out, leaving that cavity. But it still doesn't give you. Let's see if I do it. If I do it this way and just dunk it in there to the halfway mark. Then when I pull it out, I move that. I've got my mother mold on that half. Flip it over. And I'm pouring it into here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I feel like I have. Let me see if I have a diagram somewhere that I saved. document like I hoped it would be. Let's check my YouTube's folder. my notes for making the mold making video but I don't have my diagram in it why not I ask myself that's where it should be maybe I have a different one I don't remember making So I know I have it on oh, my other computer. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna go print it out from my other computer real quick. Be another couple minutes, sorry guys.
Boom! All right. I fed so many birds with one stone. Here we go. Okay, so this is a delightful illustration made by a guy who posted this on a forum like years and years and years ago. I've been keeping it and wanting to kind of do my version of it. Okay, so here's the basics. You got your face. It's facing up, your sculpture. You lay up. Here you can see it's in this kind of cardboard. It just kind of creates a, a cardboard thingy for it. Then he builds this mother mold, or sorry, this is the rubber mold that the mother is going to be built over. Okay. Then he gets out his plaster and bandages. Then I believe it goes to this step, right? So he puts the plaster over it. Um, this little hole, I believe, is from a bottle cap that's not shown on here, unless I have these out of order. Okay. So he flips it over, takes off the cardboard, and he's got all the clay there. Uh, let's see. And does the next layer of clay over the sculpture. Does the next mother mold on top of that. So the part that I'm unclear on is how it stays in place for the pouring. Okay, so he's got the two mother molds, the clay inside, he flips it over, pulls out his actual piece of art. Uh, still got the plastic wrap in there. Okay, these must be a little out of order. So this should go up before this, but okay. Gets those. Okay, so from here, he sculpts that down really nice, so it's this nice surface. Then he goes to this part. Sorry, I need to make sure you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. So this part, uh, he scries these little lines so the rubber joints will fit together perfectly. Uh, molding and casting is super hard for my brain. There's something about that like inversion and then when you have to double the inversion based on the mother mold and the rubber, yeah, it's, it's crazy. That's why I keep needing to refer to this diagram. Um, so after after it goes to this well to this part he's got to do half of it in rubber Okay, and then once the half is done in rubber, it's held in place by the clay. So when he flips it over, he removes that half of the clay. Okay. So to answer my immediate concern, my immediate concern is, do I need to have uh, this half follow the seams perfectly for the mother mold part of it and the answer is no nay I do not uh, I can it can be rough as you can see here it's pretty rough after it's pulled out then he goes in and makes sure that the seams are exactly where he wants them um, but I'm guessing I still want it to be fairly fairly close because 
um, for instance, if the if the plaster of the mother mold is here and I need to like get down here to where the seam is, I won't be able to do it with the mother mold. So, so I need to follow this somewhat closely. I hate it when this stuff falls on the floor because then it always gets on my shoe and then it always ends up inside on the carpet. Uh, and I was just thinking I should get the hot glue out and start making a little bed for this guy. Look at this beautiful little drop that I have. I keep thinking I should do something with it, but I don't know what. Put it over here. Actually, you know what would be easier than making it with cardboard would be using all this all this foam I got laying around. I could just carve a piece really easily. Alright, hot glue gun, you're cancelled for now. You may come back to you though, don't worry. Back in the oven again.
You know what? I use that hot glue gun enough. I think I think he'll get over it. How we're gonna use his little brother, uh, a little, little baby, little blue baby, uh, just because the high temp glue melts through this stuff really fast. Low temp uh, works a lot better on foam. And since I want this to set up right away, seems like the best approach for that. You need to yell at me about the last story in Guild Wars? Okay. Keep in mind, I do have full control over every element of the story in Guild Wars. So I'm definitely the appropriate person to yell at about that. project. One of my least favorite things about baby hot glue gun is how Forever it takes her to warm up. Forever and a half, it seems. need to get that wide lip around the edge. I 
can overdo it and make it should make it whiter than I think it needs to be. Laura says, for me it's that they never want to sit straight up on the little holder and they always fall on their side. Yeah, my holder is just gone. It's not even worth it. Thing I need to be sure of. Oh, that's very warm. Is that I'm airing on the side of clay going past the seam. I think. I hope I'm airing on the right side.
it's okay if this part is super rough because it's going to be completely cut down and refined after we pour the rubber. Let's see, I want this, the back part of the mother mold to be angled down so I have the maximum amount of ability to get back here and adjust things on this side. As long as there's no undercut, it should be fine.
more than others. I didn't get you anything recently, but I think we did last time you were here, so you should look for it.
Do we have any bread? Just no, one in piece left. Protolina. This is the new clean clay. Because clean clay doesn't exist anymore. Rip clean clay. Hey, lazy fun, Lexi. We have a uh, mold in process for mold making. Trying to, I'm making a tutorial and a product to sell, hopefully. Molding a statue that I've had uh, for over 10 years and kept meaning to get around to and now that I'm gonna have a booth at a convention I really want to have stuff to sell this particular one it's really just practice before I do the real important one which is my Bowmark bust since that's the guy I want to be promoting Yep, can't wait to get in my first convention booth. It's gonna be fun. some walls around well won't do the walls yet let's make the surface a little prettier because why not it'll just take a couple minutes and it'll make the tutorial look nicer as a clay rig.
I, I think I want the clay to be between a quarter and three quarters of an inch thick. Basically, the thinner it is, the less rubber it's going to be, and rubber is very expensive, and even more importantly to me, I have a limited amount of it, and I can't just go to the store and buy more. If, gosh, I wish there was a local supplier, but if I run out halfway through, I have to uh, order from Spokane or Idaho or whatever the nearest Northwest supplier is, and then it's gonna be a week or two and shipping is ridiculous. And so I just, minimizing rubber is, I prioritize probably higher than I should. Like in all the tutorial videos, especially by the ones made by the companies that make the rubbers, they just pour it into like a big square box like this and like all that rubber is, oh my God, it's, that would be save so much time, but cost so much money. So this kind of mother mold with a thinner rubber inside of it is the workaround for that. If I had unlimited money, I wouldn't be bothering with the mother mold at all. be really awesome if this clay was translucent so I could see the sculpture underneath and know how close I was getting to it. Yeah, I wonder if uh, I wonder if I'm the first person to think of the idea of unlimited money. I, someone should invent that. Lazy Fawn, I live in the greater Seattle area. In the United States of America. My dream is to someday, once I get good at doing conventions, is to do the San Diego, San Diego Comic Con even though that thing is, by all reports, banana bonkers, overcrowded, and almost universally acknowledged to be miserable, and yet people still keep going. Hey, Ash. It is bizarre that there's no local supplier, isn't it? So there are 
some places, such as Seattle Pottery Supply and Dick Blick Art Supply, that carry some kinds of material. Oh my gosh! A place just opened up, actually. Um, I wonder if they're still open. Probably over a year ago was when I went to it. It's down in um, south of Renton. What is that area called? Uh, there, there's a smooth-on supplier now. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, yeah, so maybe I can just drive. I mean, it's still a, probably an hour drive for me, realistically. But still way better than having to wait for days and days. Tequila, South Center, Kent. Yeah, like if you keep going down 167 past Renton, there's Kent, and then I feel like it's the south of Kent, basically. Like halfway to Puyallup. And I remember that I visited it because, oh yeah, because I, uh, let's see, last year at Emerald City Comic Con, they had a booth. And they were handing out info, hey, we're about to open up a Smooth On Supply store locally. And I was like, oh, so excited. And then I visited it after, must have been Norwest Con because I was down in that area anyway, I think. So that would have been in the spring. And I was, it's a, it's a gorgeous place. Like it's, oh, it's heaven for artists like myself. Um, and I remember thinking, how in the world are they going to have enough business to stay open? But we'll see. We shall see. I should, um, actually, probably right after this, I'm going to look it up because that could change my plans as far as what I cast with what material if I'm able to actually just call and say hey do you have any more can't even remember what I'm using for this because um, if they do have more I can be less concerned with skimping and scraping yeah almost Auburn Okay, we're getting close. This area, I need to make sure, see, once the stuff fills in there, I think that will kind of be an overhang and it'll get stuck if it's not, doesn't have a little bit of angle there. So I'm just gonna this. Working Sculpey Miniatures. Haven't got to molding yet. Yep. That's how I started. Actually, I started with uh, Cernit back before... I think it was before Sculpey was invented in the mid-80s. When I was a little one. What kind of figures do you make, Esh? You want to post a link to anything you got?
25 millimeter minis. Oh, fun. Low octopi. Octopuses, I know technically, I still call them octopi because I like it. Because I feel like it. I just posted a video on Facebook about a diver who befriended a itty bitty octopus who liked playing with her hand. things. inch bases. I've been doing a lot more one inch min miniature dwarves for D&D. Nice. I did a bunch of little gnomes for a board game that I designed that I will still end up doing a video about at some point. I've not got to that point yet. I had to stop progress on anything that wasn't my books to get those out. This is a rare exception that I'm working on now just because it's actually a warm up practice to get the thing done for my book cover. And casting. I'm gonna be molding and casting Bowmark here next. If you uh, like fantasy stories, novels, fictions, uh, you should go to my website and sign up for my newsletter so you can uh, be alerted when my book comes out on April 1st. It doesn't have dwarves per se, but it has dwarf-like creatures.
Dwarves related to the current D&D session I'm running. The octopus shark related to the aquatic adventure at that time. Um, like in your D&D session, they're going uh, underwater? Or is that a separate game? I've never done a campaign where we went underwater. That sounds exciting. For specific adventures, so I have a focus rather than make something. Details and size come with practice. Yep, indeed. Last time, I uh, gave myself a project of just make something, because I was doing a, a series of tutorials for Sculpey. I ended up making, uh, making this, which is just, what a bizarre thing. He's like a guy with a pot on his head, and there's a spooky arm coming out of the pot, and touching him on the side of the head, and making them get old, and it's like, what, what is, what is any of that? No one knows. It was just like, well, I need to show how to do a head, and I want to show how to do a hand, and so I just put it together. Tutorials change your life? Whoa! That is quite a uh, quite a quote. I wish I I wish I had a book. I, I would put that on the uh, sleeve. Stop sculpting sense. Awesome, man. Glad to hear that. Very few things are as fun as sculpting for me. Mold making, on the other hand, not so fun. This is more of one of those things where it's like, well, if you want to have copies, this is just what you got to do.
Mostly video game related stuff though, not so much humanoids. Uh, what kind of video game stuff? I mean, video game stuff can mean literally anything since there's video games about literally everything now. Need a rock troll from the Witcher series, a character from the game Hellblade named Valraven, I'm in the middle of a Subnautica themed piece, a Cthulhu, and some other assorted animals. Awesome! Those all sound like fun projects.
keep forgetting I should play Hellblade. It's a pretty short game, isn't it? Put myself on a break from playing video games for the past, gosh, it's probably going on about five or six months now, so I've not played any of the really big games from this year, although Hellblade was last year, really. Um, played Far Cry 5 for a bit. I think that was the last kind of big AAA game that I let myself play. Wild Bride, huh? About five hours? Yeah. That's what I hear. That is, that is the kind of experience I am looking for someone with very limited time. you. The focus button should not also be the record button. It's really draining, so make sure you wear a good headset to get immersed. Oh, I got surround speakers. That should probably do the trick.
but I'm failing at getting a straight line here, aren't I? Good way to do to, like a melon baller would be perfect. If I had an itty bitty melon baller, what's the next best thing? Teaspoon or tablespoon? It's 
Not a bad thought. Let me go look real quick. I might. This is bigger than I wanted, but it might work. Play Guild Wars with Mom. Alright. Thanks for stopping by, Alita. Have fun. I don't want it to go too deep because sometimes then the rubber ends up with like a long kind of flap that can bend funny when you're trying to get it into the mother mold.
ます。Probably overkill. Although part of the motivation is like every little bit of clay I pull out of here is a little bit less that's less uh, mold rubber I'm gonna need, so. But the amount of time that I'm sacrificing to get those little bit of gains Probably not worth it. It's just that so many times I've started to pour the rubber and ran out and not had any more available and that is an awful situation to be in.
card. Now I'm wondering. Here's some alcohol. I wonder if this stuff smooths up with alcohol or if that ruins it. Let's find out. Shall we? I worked so hard to make this pretty. I might as well see if I can finish the job. smoothing. I think I'd like to be able to just take a brush over the surface to get it all smoothed out, especially in these little divots. enough difference to make it worth the effort. <laughs> okay. Um, so, am I going to use... I'm just going to use plaster, I think. I could use um, plaster paste. But I honestly don't know where it is. And it's more expensive, so those are good reasons to go with. Good reasons to go with plaster. Um, and if I mix some plaster, let's put some foil. Plaster in, you ask? Oh, some bucket. Surely I have a bucket around here somewhere that I don't care about. That's the trick. Actually, I guess I could mix it in this. And it will probably crack out, and if not, this was pretty darn cheap, so. Alright, I'm going to put some water in here, be right back.
almost forgot I need one of these guys to give it an air hole. Do we need that or should I just use a... Hmm. I could just use clay to build one up. I'm trying to think of what the advantage and disadvantage of... This plastic might stick in it. All the stuff won't. Man, I've had this hydrocal for, I wonder if I've had it for 15 years. Finally almost out of it.
It's a little more liquidy than I want, but it usually sets up pretty fast. Now it's important that the, um, do, 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 what is this? Plaster? Hydrocal. It's practically plaster. That these two vents are about the same height. Because if this one's lower and you start pouring the rubber in, it'll bubble up out of the lower hole.
Laura says, I remember watching a video of what you were doing with that plaster, something about water, and then it builds up to a hill in the water. It's not a real measurement, right? No, it's just one of those things you you learn from experience. Once, uh, once the hill is kind of out of the water, well, it depends on this, the shape of the container, too. Like, since I was using a square one, there was more... Uh, kind of surface area for it to poke up out of the water from. So I didn't build it up as high as I would if it was in a round container. But yeah, once enough is poking up out of the surface, and you see that it's starting to stay dry on the on the tips. Uh, that's when you know it's about the right the right mix. pull it out relatively soon but I have been streaming over five hours it's probably about time I paid attention to my family at some point so I think now's a good time to call it um yeah make sure this will be nice and set up when I come at it next time so yeah thanks everyone for joining me 
Um, if you didn't know, I have a book. You should check it out on April 1st. It's coming out. Go to my website, Breath of Life Dev, D E V, Breath of Life Dev dot com. And uh, you could sign up for the mailing list and then you'll be alerted as soon as it's out. Uh, so that's my call to action. I try to always put one in at the end. I'm, I'm starting to become a habit. It's not quite there yet, but I did remember this time. So good for me. All right, we'll see you guys on, let's see, today's Sunday, on Wednesday. See you Wednesday. Bye.